I, I just thought it would be neat to have a piece with, you know, everybody that I knew in it celebrating during, you know, this pinnacle moment in their careers. And um, the, the baseball world is very small. Everybody kind of knows everybody. And so you get something like that out there and they start talking about it. And, you know, guys in the bullpen or in the dugout, you know, during games don't have a whole lot to talk about every day. So eventually they get around to something like a painting and talking about me and my work. And when the World Series painting started, that happened in spades. And then uh, the Red Sox happened. And, um, and then it just kind of, you know, it, it mushroomed from there. I mean, so many people saw it, so many people knew about it, all over the league, fans, etc. Yeah, it, it became a tradition after that. There's, there's not a more complicated painting I do every year out of the hundred or so works I do a year, that is by far consistently the most complicated because there are so many people and there is such a large story to tell, especially this year. You have to tell the story very carefully, but you also have to tell it very completely in order to make sure not only you satisfy fans of the game, historians of the game, which will call you out on any nuance that you missed, and the players themselves. There are 25 guys on a roster for the World Series. And if every single one of them isn't represented in some way, the first person I'm gonna hear from is the person that isn't in the painting. And to this day, Dave Roberts has never forgiven me for leaving him out of the painting in 2004 with the Red Sox. And every time I see him, he brings it up. 2006, when the Cardinals won, uh, Aaron Miles was on that team, and, and uh, right before the final pitch of the World Series, Aaron had his warm-up jacket on, and he thought to himself, literally moments before the last pitch, that I need to take my jacket off in case Opie paints me from behind so you see my name on the back of my jersey instead of just the starter jacket. You know, he tells me this story, and I'm like, you're having the pinnacle moment of your career, maybe your life, the thought of what is going into my painting is running through your head, that's pretty cool. In a baseball sense, that means you've, you've arrived. You know, we, we won't see a more historically significant World Series in our lifetime. It's, this is the one, 108 years. I, there's a realness to being a Cubs fan, I think, that we are Cubs fans because we lose. We are identified and more passionate about our team because we have lost and never won than a fan that wins all the time. There's some ownership of it that seems very genuine to being a Cubs fan. Where I come in in that is that I'm just like them because baseball has been interwoven into the fabric of my life, of my history, of my childhood. That's the commonality. And with fans and this particular painting, that's what I'm trying to express is that commonality. You know, we watched it, we saw it, it happened. You know, you, you have 108 years to consider history-wise. You have curses, you have black cats, you have great, great Hall of Fame baseball players that played the majority of their career there. But really right when the celebration started and Rizzo came together, that had to be part of the center of the entire thing. Um, and then you just kind of build outward from there. Above in the, in the night sky in Cleveland, uh, paint ghost Wrigley Field into it, but also players that have had their number retired by the Cubs tipping their hats as if in honor of the win. One of my favorite parts of the painting is Harry Carey, the longtime announcer for the Cubs, up in heaven. He's reading the trib and seeing that we finally won. On the far left, of course, is the goat. Also, the 
If you look behind on the scoreboard, Theo Epstein and the manager, Joe Madden, celebrating the World Series in the clubhouse. The only player not tipping his caps is Ron Santo, who was, of course, part of the, the black cat moment in 1969. I have him kind of looking back at a cat as if to say, this is, it's over. Those are the moments that have to be in there to tell the story. How do you sum up 108 years of disappointment into one painting? And all the while you're composing one of these, you have to consider who is where, because there are marquee players and there are secondary players, but sometimes there are secondary players that during the celebration did something memorable or remarkable. Um, Edwards Jr., when he ran around with the W flag, um, all over the field with his hat on backwards was just a very memorable moment. So it had to be a part of it somewhere. Since finishing that painting, I've gotten emails from people that sent me pictures of them at their parents' gravesite posting a wind flag in, in the ground. I mean, that's how much it means to people. I mean, how much it means to, you know, generations of Cubs fans in Chicago. So the great grandfathers of people that were Cubs fans lived through their entire lives not having experienced a World Series win. Um, as soon as the painting was done, I, I sent uh, David Ross, John Lester, um, an email of the, of the final piece. And then from there, it went virally to the rest of the team. Um, John Lackey, who lives very close to me in Texas, had seen it and he was going to an event, a local event, and he said, Opie, can you bring, can you bring the print? Do you have the painting? Can you show it to me? And so I took it over to him and you know, on a windy day in Texas, showed him the print. And he's like, I'm right there. Okay, good. I'm in a good spot. I'm like, you're in a good spot. It needed more than one painting. It needed more than 10 paintings. I guess that's just my process for being excited about the fact that they won is produce a lot of work. Oh, I got this idea. I got this idea. Oh, I could paint this. And as many as I can get done in time for the show, that's what I'll do. Not being a player, not being someone who ever was um, actively involved as a player in baseball and to have some sort of connection to the history of the game is like a dream come true. And the best part about it is I don't ever have to retire. Five million people came to the parade. Five million people. So hopefully we'll get a few people for the show. <laughs> <laughs>